Hello, I'm Michelle Murray, principal of Howe Elementary School, and I'm very excited to welcome our students back for full-time in-person instruction on March 15th. You may have some questions about what the school day will look like given all the health and safety measures we've put into place during this pandemic. I hope to answer many of those questions in this short presentation, but if you have questions or concerns following, please contact me by phone or email. First, you should have received an elementary selection form from our assistant superintendent's office via email. On this form, you're being asked to indicate what instructional mode you are selecting for your child for this next transition. It's important that you indicate whether your child will stay in the Cyber Learning Academy, switch to the Cyber Learning Academy, or return to full in-person instruction. We ask that you complete this form by Thursday, March 11th at noon. To help you make a more informed decision, this presentation will review the protocols and procedures that the House Safety Team has created to ensure we're following Mount Lebanon School District's health and safety plan. So first, I will, dis I will review the arrival and dismissal procedures. <clears throat> arrival will look similar to how it has been in the hybrid mode. Students will enter in one of three entrances by grade level to ensure a staggered arrival with appropriate distancing in the hallways. The only difference is that our kindergarten classroom has been moved up to the main hallway to accommodate the required four to six feet of distancing needed. Therefore, the kindergarten and second grade classrooms will switch doors for arrival and dismissal. This means that kindergarten, both a.m. and p.m., will use the main entrance of house school and second grade will use the entrance D14, which is located in the primary courtyard. The same doors will be used by each grade level for arrival and dismissal. So kindergarten and fifth grade will use the main entrance. Grades three and four will use entrance A2 nearest the faculty parking lot. And grades one and two will use D14 in the primary courtyard. If you have children in multiple grades exiting different doors, you can plan a common meeting spot so that they can walk home together. Arrival time starts at 8.25 a.m. and the late bell is at 8.35. Students are asked to not congregate before school until about five minutes prior to arrival time. By then, each entrance will be supervised by a staff member. Masks must be worn by all students and staff. The playground and basketball court is closed to students before school, and all school grounds are closed to the public throughout the school day. Arrival for afternoon kindergarten starts at 1235, and the late bell rings at 1245. The teacher will be at the door to greet students and take them to their classroom. Dismissal for AM kindergarten is also through the main entrance at 1120 AM daily and the teacher will again escort the students to the exit. Dismissal from school for PM kindergarten and grades one through five is at 3.30 PM. Students will be dismissed again by grade levels at their designated arrival entrance. PM, K, and grade five will exit the main entrance. Grades three and four will exit D A door A2 and nearest the faculty parking lot, and grades one and two will exit through D14 in the primary courtyard. Our lunch and recess schedule occurs between 12 and one o'clock each day. Students in grades one, two, and half of third grade will eat lunch from 12.30, 12, excuse me, 12 to 12.30, while the older students in grades four and five, plus the other half of third grade, will have recess. And at 12.30, the groups switch, and the younger students have recess while the older students eat lunch from 12.30 to one. This is the same schedule we've implemented in previous school years. Students still have the option to go home for lunch and recess hour if they have written permission from a parent or guardian. We ask that they do not return to school until the lunch hour is over, as their classes will be dispersed in many places. They will re-enter through the main office at one o'clock. To comply with the required six feet of distance between students who are not masked, as in while eating, we've identified some non-traditional spaces for lunch. Students will be assigned to one of four areas by grade and class. For consistency in supervision and ease of distributing lunches, their assigned area will remain the same through the end of the school year. Students will be assigned to eat in one of the following areas, cafeteria, the gymnasium, the lower level hallway, or the art room. All students will use barrier boards while eating lunch. 
Tables and chairs will be set up in the lower level hallway and students will eat picnic style in the gymnasium with these plastic lap trays provided for their lunch. All students will be asked to clean their lunch area by using sanitizing wipes and throwing away their personal trash. Everyone is needed to pitch in with more spaces to clean for lunchtime. Students are also asked to prioritize eating at lunch. They're also asked to put their masks on before chatting in soft voices. And they may also bring a book to read when finished eating their lunch. The protocols for lunch include six feet of separation, washing hands before and after, and the wearing of masks and less eating. Grab and go bag lunches will continue to be provided by the District Food Services Department for all students who order them. Cyber Learning Academy students will be able to pick up grab and go lunches as well, but should watch for information from the district as they may need to pick up lunches at a different location like Mellon School. After lunch, students will be directed to their assigned recess area by class or grade level. Outdoor recess areas are the blacktop area by the gymnasium, the playground and ball field, and the basketball court on Anawanda. Playground equipment may be used by students on that area, but students will be required to wash their hands immediately following recess. Classes assigned to one of the two blacktop areas will be given equipment like balls and jump ropes. As we live in Pittsburgh, the reality is that we have to have an alternate plan for indoor recess due to inclement weather. Misty drizzle will not necessarily keep us indoors, but steady rain or extreme temperatures would indicate a need for students to remain inside the building. Students will have indoor recess in their own classrooms, their homerooms, supervised by a staff member. And because we wish to minimize the sharing of materials, we are asking students to come prepared with an indoor recess kit. This could include a Ziploc bag with a coloring book, or crayons, a book to read, puzzle, a small Lego kit, or some other small toy or handheld game. We discourage the use of electronic devices during recess, as this 30-minute time could provide a good break from screens. Regarding the master schedule, um, in grades four and five, teachers departmentalize four classes. All fourth and fifth grade teachers teach math, but they divide the teaching responsibilities for reading, writing, social studies, and science. So students in grade four and five also have health class, and they will have to switch classes two to three times each day to facilitate this departmentalized instruction. This is especially helpful when students engage in science experiments and labs, which can be set up in the central classroom. Encore classes, which include music, voc uh, vocal music, instrumental music, art, phys ed, library, and Spanish, um, will resume as normal. Most students will report to their typical Encore classroom, library, or gymnasium as before. There may be one or two exceptions if we have larger classes that cannot be accommodated in the art room, in which case the art teacher will go to the students. The Encore teachers have developed specific guidelines for the health and safety of students in their classes in accordance with the District Mount Lebanon's uh, health and safety plan, as well as best practices recommended by their respective professional associations. So for example, art materials will not be shared as much as usual, and PE will occur outside as much as possible. Singing will also not occur in the classroom, but vocal music teachers have the option to take students outdoors for appropriate distancing and ventilation if they wish to sing. Students who receive any of the numerous support services for math or reading or speech or things like occupational therapy, uh, physical therapy, so forth, uh, will still receive these services and they will be received in person. Students will report to the support service classroom. If you have questions about the specific services your child is or should be receiving, please contact your homeroom teacher, school counselor, Mrs. Karbowski, or myself. I would also like to remind parents and guardians that students should stay home from school if they have any of the above symptoms, including but not limited to fever, vomiting, coughing, or loss of taste or smell. Students should not return to school until they are symptom-free for at least 24 hours without medication. Um, if you have, and if you're unsure about your child's fitness for, for attending school, or if you have other health-related questions, please contact our health, uh, health office. Mrs. Gerhart will be happy to help you. To recap, 
Here are some of the important sanitation and mitigation strategies we're employing to prevent the spread of illness. Students and staff are required to wear masks at all times unless eating. Mask breaks are to occur under the supervision of a teacher in an outdoor space with appropriate distancing and not to exceed 10 minutes. As per our district health and safety plan, we will maintain six feet distancing anytime students are not wearing masks, as in during lunch, and we will provide at least four feet distancing in all instructional spaces. We will require students to wash or sanitize their hands several times during the day, particularly before, after lunch and recess. We will try to limit the use of shared materials as much as possible, and when materials have to be shared, students will be required to wash their hands immediately following. Students will also use individual barrier boards in all lunch areas and instructional spaces. <clears throat> there are also directional signs in the halls and stairs to direct traffic and minimize contact during the change of classes. We will limit the use of restrooms to one to two students at a time in alternate stalls. Moreover, we will maintain student cohorts by classroom or at most by grade level to minimize exposure and facilitate easier contact tracing. It's our goal to maintain a safe and hygienic environment for all students and staff. I hope that the information I've shared in this presentation has answered most of your questions. If you still have concerns on any related topics, please contact me, Michelle Murray, or our school counselor, Mrs. Karbowski, or the school nurse, Mrs. Carly Gerhardt. We're all here to help you feel good about having your child return to school full time. We're really excited to welcome them back to Howe on March 15th. Uh, thank you.